Today's lesson is called glass collisions. What birds don't see can kill them. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeff. My name is Roger, and today we're going to talk about birds. And we love birds. We like to hear them sing. We like to check out their feathers, and、uh, you know, go out into forested areas and take our binoculars and do bird watching and stuff like that. But birds seem to be suffering from the effects of modern civilization. When we build our huge buildings covered in glass. Birds have problems with them. They kind of fly into those buildings because they can't tell the difference between the building and regular air because of that glass there. So we're killing birds just so we can sit comfortably in our office. How about that? How terrible! Birds are beautiful. It's just so sad that such a beautiful, delicate creature can be killed by a collision with glass. Oh my goodness! And this actually happens. I've seen it happen before. A bird is in flight, mid-flight, gracefully swooping down and kablooey. It smashes into glass. The bird doesn't see the glass. It's transparent, so it crashes into that glass as though it were crashing into a brick wall. It is not a nice sight to see. Take my word for it. Well, take my word for it, and also listen up while we read this article on glass collisions. What birds don't see can kill them. Anyways, folks, let's get started. We'll do so right after a short break. Glass collisions. What birds don't see can kill them. What is causing the death of countless birds across America and other parts of the world? It's not a hungry predator or a terrible disease, as you might assume. Rather, it's glass. Up to a billion birds are estimated to have died in America as a result of collisions with windows and skyscraper facades made of glass. 大家好，标题中我们看到单字 collision， 这个字是名词，指碰撞、相撞。例如。Drivers should keep a safe distance from cars in front of them to avoid collisions. 驾驶应与前方车辆保持安全距离，以免相撞。另外，补充这个字的动词 collide, c o l l i d e, collide 指碰撞、冲突、抵触。像是 Rachel collided with her boss as she stepped off the elevator. Rachel 在出电梯时撞上了她的老板。或是 Two cultures collided when the European settlers arrived in the Americas. 欧洲移民来到美洲时，两种文化相互冲击。接下来我们看到动词 assume， 指以为、猜想、假设。例如 ，Mike assumed his wife would be doing the shopping on her way back from work. Mike 以为他太太会在下班途中买些东西。或是 ，It's best not to assume anything until you hear Jill's side of the story. 在你听到 Jill 那边的说法之前，最好不要做任何假设。另外，除了上面的意思，这个字还可以指阶下、职位、单起角色，像是 The vice president will assume the office of president if the president is killed。若是总统被杀害，副总统会接下总统的职位，或是 Sarah assumed the role of the parent for her younger siblings while her mother was in the hospital。Sarah 的妈妈住院期间，她担起家长的角色照顾弟妹。再来，我们看到一个单字 facade， 这个字是名词，有指大型建筑物的正面。举例来说 ，The facade of the building was damaged in the war。这栋建筑物的正面在战争中损毁。Okay, let's talk about the title first here before we talk about the first part of our lesson. A collision is when something bashes into something else. We often talk about traffic accidents in terms of collisions. A collision, of course, is the noun form of the verb to collide, which means basically two things run into each other, usually in a violent way. And there's a loud sound, there's a loud crashing sound, and somebody probably gets hurt, and they might even get killed. So in this particular case, we're talking about. Birds colliding with glass—they're just flying into glass, and that kills them. 
Yeah, it's terrible. What birds don't see can kill them. By the way, we've got a phrase here. What birds don't see can kill them. Usually the phrase goes something like this. What you don't know, well, that can't hurt you. But what we're saying here is that birds, they're not seeing something. What they can't see, it can kill them. It can do them harm. So, Colliding with glass, it's not a good thing for us, and it's not a good thing for birds either. The difference being, we know it's glass, birds do not. So they don't see it, they don't know it's there, and when they crash into it or collide with it, it can kill them. Poor birdies. Anyways, what is causing the death of countless birds across America and other parts of the world? What's causing as well? glass collisions. It's not a hungry predator or a terrible disease, as you might assume. Rather, it's glass. So yes, you might assume, yes, it's a condor. It's another large carnivorous bird that's swooping down from high up in the sky that's eating all of these birds. Yeah, that's what's going on, right? Wrong. Glass collisions is the problem. But yes, if you were to assume that a condor might be eating up smaller birds or something like that, that would have been a reasonable assumption. By the way, if you assume something, you believe that something is true, though maybe you don't have all the facts or all of the information. Indeed. But, uh, you know, I've heard in the news many times that uh, bird populations in North America have dropped significantly in the past 10 or 20 years. So it's not only going on in America, but in also other parts of the world. Bird populations are decreasing for various reasons, but we're saying it's not because of a hungry predator or a terrible disease, as you might assume. There are other reasons why bird populations are going down. I should mention that the problem of stray cats is pretty big for birds. They kill thousands of birds because cats like to do that sort of thing. So, yeah, you shouldn't let your cat outside because they're going to kill all those birds. Not all of them, of course, but a lot of them. But we're talking about a different problem here, especially in cities. Rather, instead, it's glass. Glass is the problem. Glass is the problem. Glass and glass collisions. Yeah, get this. Up to a billion birds are estimated to have died in America as a result of collisions with windows and skyscraper facades made of glass. And yes, that's not a typo. That's billion, B-I-L-L-I-O-N, not million, billions. That's a whole lot of dead birds. And why are they dead? Because of glass. How sad. By the way, have exactly a billion birds died in this way? No, we are estimating here. We are estimated indeed. So, yeah, nobody can go out and count all the bird bodies in every city next to every building. So they kind of have to make an educated guess. They are estimating that this number of birds have died in America over a certain period of time as a result of collisions with windows and skyscraper facades that are made out of glass. So, yeah, they're not only just windows. It could be windows in your house, for example. The bird might think they can fly right in, but surprise, there's some glass there. And that bird who was out for a pleasant little afternoon flight looking for worms now has to tumble to the ground as a dead bird. So yes, this happens when they collide with windows and also when they collide with skyscraper facades that are made of glass. A skyscraper, of course, is the same word in Chinese, mo tian dalo, skyscraper, something that actually scrapes the sky because it's so tall. And a facade usually refers to the front part of a building. This word is spelled F-A-C-A-D. E facade. Sometimes there's a little squiggle under the letter C there to tell us that that C is supposed to be pronounced as an S. Facade. Just basically the front of a building. Yeah. It's a skyscraper like Taipei 101. Very often these particular buildings, the outside is going to be covered with glass or the facades are made out of glass. And 
This is very beautiful. Or it makes for a beautiful building, I should say. Okay, but is this good for birds? No windows and these glass maze skyscraper facades are responsible for many, many deaths as far as birds are concerned. Up to a billion birds have died because of these collisions. And this is just in America. How about that? Okay, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a short break, but don't go away. We'll be back after this. While humans can see glass and recognize reflections, birds simply don't have that ability. Birds evolved in a glass-free world over thousands of years, and it's only within the last few centuries that glass has become a common part of our landscape. Therefore, birds haven't yet adapted their vision to this threat. A bird might see an interior space on the opposite side of a window and think they can fly directly to it. Or they may mistake a reflection on a glass facade for a new place to explore and fly headlong into the glass. As technology continues to evolve, so will our roles in society. 随着科技不断进化, 我们在社会中的角色也是, 或是, the small town evolved into a major tourist destination. 那个小镇演变成了一个重要的观光景点。接着我们看到一个单字, headlong, 这个字是副词, 指头朝前的, 快速的, 之后常接 into, 加名词, 像是, the naughty little boy fell headlong into the sea. 那名调皮的小男孩一头栽进了海里。All right, let's summarize the second part of our lesson for today, or at least let's talk about it in detail. Here it says, while humans can see glass and recognize reflections, birds simply don't have that ability. So basically we're saying humans can see glass, but birds can't. And when we see glass, of course, we recognize reflections. That helps us know that there is glass there. Sometimes we're fooled by that. I remember walking into a big uh, plane of glass in the Hong Kong airport because I just didn't see any reflections in that glass, so I thought, I could walk through there, but bang, I got a big surprise there. But that's still rare, okay? That doesn't happen too often because humans can recognize reflections. They can tell that there's glass there, but birds, well, they have bird brains and they don't have that ability. Yeah, they might be beautiful and delicate, but are they super intelligent creatures? Not really. They've got small brains, so they're limited. Okay, in certain ways, and apparently they can't see glass and they can't recognize reflections like we can as human beings. Birds simply don't have this ability. By the way, when you're talking about a reflection, you're talking about your image, let's say, that you see in something else. Like you can look in a mirror and see a reflection. You can look in glass and see yourself in that glass. That's a reflection. You can see yourself in water, a reflection of yourself on the surface of still water, let's say. Yes, these are all examples of reflections. Yeah, reflection, by the way, is a noun. It comes from the verb reflect, okay? When light hits the surface, okay, and then comes back and goes into our eyeball, we are seeing a reflection because that light has reflected, let's say, off of that mirror or off that pane of glass, so on, so forth. Anyways, yes, birds, they can't see glass at all. Why? Because birds evolved in a glass-free world over thousands of years. And it's only within the last few centuries that glass has become a common part of our landscape. So birds have been around forever, and they've never had to contend with glass. So it's a new foe for them, and they're losing this fight, the fight against glass. Yep, to evolve means to develop and change over a long period of time. For example, science tells us that humans and apes evolved from a common ancestor, but here birds evolved in a glass-free world, a world that did not have glass over thousands, perhaps even millions of years, 
And only in the last few centuries, glass has become a common part of our landscape in our cities and places like that. Yeah, we've、uh, only started to really use glass relatively recently in terms of world history. So they haven't been able to evolve to such a point where they can adapt their vision to this threat. So here we've got the verb phrase to adapt something to something else, which means you make the necessary adjustments so that something can work in a new environment. You might want to adapt your car to work in a different environment. For example, if you're going to drive your car in the winter, you need to adapt it to winter conditions. Put antifreeze in the radiator. Put on snow tires. And stuff like that. You need to adapt it to new conditions. Well, a bird might see an interior space on the opposite side of a window and think they can fly directly to it, or they may mistake a reflection on a glass facade for a new place to explore. And fly headlong into the glass. Headlong just means head first. They fly with their heads up ahead, and the head is the first part of their body to hit the glass. And of course, as you know, head injuries are the most serious of all, and so that probably brings about their death. So indeed, they see that interior space on the opposite side of the window or the other side of something. That's the opposite. Say, hey, where's the church? Oh, it's opposite the post office. It's on the other side of the road. So there you go. The bird is on the outside, and it doesn't know that there is an inside on the other side or the opposite side of that glass, and that's when things go terribly, terribly wrong for that poor bird. Anyways, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a short break. But don't go away. When we come back, we'll be wrapping up the first part of our article on glass collisions. Related to the problem of glass is artificial lighting. Many migratory birds, such as swallows, warblers, and thrushes, have the habit of traveling at night, using light from the moon and the stars to guide them. Consequently, they can get confused by artificial light sources, fly towards them, and crash into windows. Finally, the third part, we see the verb "consequently," consequently, meaning because. So, as an example, let's say. Walter has been taking Spanish lessons. Consequently, he can now speak a little Spanish. Walter 一直在上西班牙文课，因此他现在会说一点点西班牙语。另外，补充一个同义副词 ，hence, h-e-n-c-e, hence. 我们可以说 ，the captain has given his order. Hence, we must follow. 船长已下了命令，因此我们必须遵从。Okay, so glass is a problem for birds, but that's not their only problem. We've got the problem of artificial lighting. So related to the problem of glass. Is artificial lighting, lighting that we provide because we're people and we know how to use electricity and stuff like that, not natural lighting. Many migratory birds, such as swallows, warblers, and thrushes, have the habit of traveling at night using light from the moon and the stars to guide them. Okay, so we've got migratory birds here, birds that fly long distances from place to place, like the black-faced spoonbill here in Taiwan. Is a migratory bird. It flies between Taiwan and Korea, and we've got some examples here. Swallows.、Uh, they're the ones that build the nests under the eaves of businesses and buildings and stuff like that. Warblers, and we've got thrushes. Those are different kinds of birds, and they travel at night. They like to fly at night, and they use the light of the moon and the light of the stars to guide them, to tell them where to go. And consequently, they can get lost or confused by artificial light sources. There you go. Consequently, or as a result, as a result of their habit of traveling at night, they can get confused by artificial light. So what happens is they get confused by artificial light sources, fly towards them, and. Crash into windows because those artificial lights are going to be on the other side of windows and stuff like that. You know, glass. So there you go. You have more glass collisions. How terrible! All right, folks. With that, it's time for us to say bye bye. But don't worry, don't fret. The Chinese teacher is on her way.
各位同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点课文第二部分的最后一句写道 ：They may mistake a reflection on a glass facade for a new place to explore. 好，这里的 mistake 是当动词用，它有误认、认错、搞错的意思。那么动词三态是 mistake、mistook、mistaken。那当我们用 mistake A。For B 就表示把 A 误认成 B， 被动用法就是 A be mistaken for B。好，例如 Teresa and her sister are often mistaken for twins。Teresa 和她的妹妹常被误认成双胞胎。那顺便补充一个用法 ，confuse A with B 则表示把 A 和 B 搞混，把 A 和 B 混为一谈。那这个片语是着重在混淆的语义，强调说把两个不同的东西。搞混了，以为是同一个。例如 ，Don't confuse money with happiness. 别把金钱和快乐混为一谈。金钱不等于快乐。好，那么课文第三部分一开始写到 ，Related to the problem of glass is artificial lighting. 和玻璃问题相关的是人工照明。那这个句子呢，是为了强调主词补语 related to the problem of glass。而把它移到句首，形成倒装句。那我们还原一下句子，它本来可以写作 Artificial lighting is related to the problem of glass. 那这边我们来学习 relate to 的不同用法。第一个 ，relate to 加名词是指与什么有关。那被动语态 A is related to B， 表示 A 和 B 有关联。像课文就是这样的用法。举例来说。I want to buy him a gift that is related to his hobbies. 我想要买给他这个跟他兴趣有关的礼物。那第二个用法是用 relate to 加名词来表达能够理解什么，对什么感同身受。那么动词 relate 在这边是指理解。我们可以用 relate to somebody 或者是 relate to something 来表达能够认同某人或某事物，跟某人或某事物产生共鸣。例如 ，I can relate to her feelings. 这表示我可以理解他的感受，我可以感同身受。第三个用法 ，relate 当动词，它有叙述、讲的意思，相当于 tell。不过它是比较正式的用字。relate something to somebody 就表示向某人叙述某件事。例如 ，the traveler related what he had seen to the villagers。那位旅人把他的所见所闻叙述给村民们听。那最后来补充一下。Related 可以用来形容相关的、有关的，或是有亲戚关系的。那么 ，be related to somebody 可以用来表达跟某人有亲戚关系。例如 ，Is she related to Emma? 她跟 Emma 有亲戚关系吗？好，那么以上见重点整理，我们回顾简单字吧。Assume. I assumed you had already eaten since you came home so late. Estimate. We estimated the number of people in the stadium to be about 10,000. Skyscraper. Taipei 101 was designed to be an environmentally friendly skyscraper. Reflection. Amy looked at her reflection on the surface of the water. Landscape. The photographer has taken beautiful photos of landscapes all around the world. Opposite. The supermarket is on the opposite side of the street. Consequently. Daisy constantly made mistakes at her new job, and consequently was fired. Okay, everyone. With that, today's article is now complete. But as always, we sure hope that you guys have enjoyed reading along with us. Anyways, I'm Jeff. I am Roger. See, See you next time. time.